Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here and welcome to episode number 46 of my Manchester United Let's Play in FM 2014. Here in this episode, we have a live game against Southampton, a pretty important game. Our form has been uh, decent recently or pretty good. It's definitely an improvement um, where I did the previous episode against, who did we play against last? I think it was Tottenham. Uh, we won 3-0. And uh, since then, we've really kicked on. Well, yeah, since that match, we've really kicked on. Uh, we've been very good defensively as well, even using attacking formation, as you know. But as you can see here, it's now the 6th of February. So that means, of course, the January transit window has just gone through. And yeah, I'm pretty sure we didn't sell anyone, which is a bit surprising because I actually did want to. Uh, because, yeah, there was a few players I thought weren't first-team quality anymore, but also... Uh, like Rooney. Rooney wanted to leave, but then he decided he wants to stay at the club. So I definitely had to give him some reserve team games to get back to that level again because I wasn't playing him because I thought he was going to leave. So as long as he wants to stay, it's it'll be, I'll be happy with playing Rooney because he's a quality player. He's going to be more experienced and maybe playing him as a central midfielder as he gets a bit older and loses his pace. Uh, he can definitely play in that kind of role. So Wayne, yeah, he's still going to be in the team for us. He's still going to be a high-quality player. He's always played well. He's scored important goals in Champions League. He won the Champions League in one of the seasons. I think it was against the Bayern Munich one. Um, yeah, I haven't yeah, I haven't made videos so much lately on this one, so I can't remember. But I'm sure you can go back and watch it. And Rooney's goal, yeah, he won us the Champions League. So he's still of uh, required quality in the team. But also Danny Rose, who I did try and sell. There was interest for some teams uh, to buy him from us, but... I don't know, they only wanted a loan deal and I wanted to sell him. So for right now, he's just going to be the backup uh, for our other main left back in... Where is he? We've got three here. Yeah, Jonathan Silva. He's our main one. Look at those attributes right there. Really, really high attributes. Uh, he's a strong player. You can see from there. In my view, he's the best left back in the game, at least on the original game, not on the update in January. Uh, I think he's better than Luke Shaw. That's just my original opinion. I guess you have to compare with other big guys like Alaba, but he's definitely not reached that level. He's still only 21, so still time to grow. And of course, we have David Donaghy, who's a young prospect with a high potential, with that four and a half star potential ability to be a world-class left back in the future. So we should have those positions covered. Uh, and now you can see in the league, we're first. We're definitely clearly first uh, right now. And regardless of that, I would think people say just play a lot into the game and that, but... Yeah, I'm still going to do that general maybe update every single month or whatever and then do a game because, um, yeah, I'm enjoying that. And, of course, there was a free transfer. I've actually got two regen Americans for free. That's a good thing in the game. Um, they always decide they want to leave for whatever reason. I'm not sure why. They just don't renew their contract or whatever team they are. Then you can sign them for free. So don't try and buy these guys. Just wait till their contract runs out. It's normally in a couple seasons. Uh, you see, they play two seasons, then they just, you can sign them on a free transfer, and they're high quality uh, region. So if you can scout them, yeah, definitely. Then also David Murray, um, he already had the work permit. He didn't need it because he's played 14 times for his country and scored seven times, averaging a goal every two games for a central midfielder. Uh, looks very good. Just put him into the under 21s because he still needs to make his way into the team, but still. Uh, he looks really good, and he's another one with good potential. I just proved that there. Uh, Four-star, potential be a star in the league. So, again, we could use more, especially with guys like Carrick uh, may not be at the team for so much longer. So, um, yeah, that's pretty good result. So, yeah, you see Wolves there, 4-1. Even Hernandez, he missed the penalty or whatever that is. 3-0 <laughs> uh, against Stoke. Pogba scoring. Uh, Pogba's actually declined. He's gone down back to 19 long shots, but he's still like, a really high-quality player, so no worries there. And yeah, you see all those results. They're going to be really similar. So we'll check out some messages as well. Usually in these scouting updates, I get them all the time. Um, but sometimes, yeah, I don't really need to look at it at the minute because I like my squad how it is. I don't really need to make any signings. Like, for me, at the current minute, I need to sell players to get out of this team. Maybe like Gene Kowasi, I'll just put him back in the under-21s because he's not the high quality yet. So definitely in the off-season, I'm probably going to look to sell some players to... Uh, make my team more balanced, but yeah, I'd love to have more players than less players. I'd like to have more players than not enough players. That's better than that, isn't it? Like, um, it's just, yeah, it's a normal thing. So, against Southampton, we've got a couple of away matches in a row, so it's always important to continue winning. 
Because if I go on slump of losing, it's happened before. Um, I've been first before. Because if you look here, uh, we're 10 points ahead of Chelsea. But if we lose maybe a couple games, uh, that's definitely going to put us in a not a great position. We just have to uh, continue the form. That's the thing and the pressure with the top teams. You have to keep winning. Because if you go on a slump of losing like in a month, if you lose like three games in a month in the league, you're gone. Not gone. Like it's a, You're putting yourself in a really bad position. That's what it basically means. So... Um, yeah, I'm sure you understand that. Some people say when you be a big team, it's a bit easy, but I think there's pressure because if you don't get the results, um, yeah, who knows, your job may be in jeopardy, even though if you've won competitions and made your board happy previously, uh, you have to keep doing the job. So here, you just got to make sure, you know, we've got a lot of players here. Like some guys like Puyol may not be there next season. Smalling, I don't see he's a high, high quality, so he may be on the outer. Vidic, Ferdinand, a couple of older guys. So, yeah, we could really look to change that up, if I'm honest. So, Nyangolan, he's definitely some guy I would like to bring in. Uh, Vitinho hasn't played so amazing lately. Um, Donahue, I don't feel we need him, because then we can just put Belanta there, and we'll just bring on um, Carnio, actually. I'll bring on Smalling for now, and then I'll stop him with Carnio, and bring Smalling in there. Carnio can come on a couple defending positions. Yeah, he's pretty good in that kind of role. Pereira's actually playing a lot now. I love playing these region player. He's Argentinian. Look at the improving as well. Um, same with Carnio. I've got heaps of Argentinian talent. I'm really happy uh, with the way they've been performing for me. Um, actually, Rooney. Now, nah, he needs more reserve guard. I'll bring Yanazai in. Yanazai's been improving very well in training also. So, uh, now nah, actually, I'm going to play Jones. I feel Jones is better than Smalling. Jones has got really good attributes. You can see Sokase there. And still only 23. He's a bit younger than Smalling. So, he can still increase. Uh, Pogba, I'm not sure whether to bring him on. Uh, Pogba instead of... Rafinha's been good. Pereira's been... No, I'll take Pereira. And look at that attacking force. Those two centre mids. Rafinha and Pogba. That is so much skill right there, isn't it? Um, and yeah, Peruzzi for Valencia. Uh, Valencia is still a key player. He probably won't be a winger for us so much anymore because of the talent we have coming through. So we can drop him back for that rotation with Peruzzi, who's been absolutely insane for me. And it's good. Uh, very good to see that. So... Um, I'll be going to the match here today, but leave in your comments. Do you like it when every episode is like this, when I just do a game? Or some episodes, do you want me to review some talent or something? Please drop in your comments. I'll uh, definitely uh, love to see what you think. Like, Do you want me to change it up? Like, Maybe every few episodes, I'll review something. But leave in your comments, what would you like me to review? That's something I'll definitely um, be keen uh, for you to leave feedback for me to take into my videos. So the videos aren't the same. That's what I mean. You could find it repetitive if I do it that way. Might need to change it up. What do you like hearing about? Uh, drop in the comments. But look here, Eric Lamella, 27 assists. He's been definitely, he's probably the closest to Ronaldo uh, that I've brought back to Manchester United. Honestly, they haven't had someone like that, in, especially in real life. Someone of that level, that winger that can score, but also create goals, especially creatively. Lamella's insane. And that's something Manchester United definitely need. Um, you can see I made the signing of them. Uh, I sold Nanny to Chelsea, if you were unaware, for around 23 million. And the Mala, he's definitely a younger type and fits in with the kind of role and um, all of that. He's just a great player, can play on the right, on the left, even in a striking position if need be. And uh, he puts the goals on the board and more so the assist. As you saw, Peruzzi gets forward as well. He's been a great replacement for Rafael. Oh, oh, he had a very, very close there. I'm not sure about anyone else. If you're managing Manchester United, drop in your comments how well has Raphael done for you. For me, in the first season, he didn't even get above a 7 average rating. So that's definitely a pressing concern. And he wanted to actually leave. So I've said this a few times. I definitely think it was a blessing in disguise because that led me to get the funds uh, to sign Peruzzi and for cheaper than I sold Raphael to PSG for. So it was all a good deal in my view because he seems to be doing better. Uh, I think he has a upside, like a bigger upside, like he can increase his potential ability or has a higher potential ability than Rafael. Oh, what a save, De Gea. I'm not sure about anyone else, but De Gea for me, he's the. I wouldn't say he's the best in the game. He's the best I've used. I haven't been by Munich and used Neuer. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I haven't had a better goalkeeper ever, ever in my history of playing football manager. As well as we've played... De Gea has been really, really good. He saved us on those kind of occasions from free kicks and where most keepers would concede a goal from that, like a perfect free kick. It was placed perfectly, um, the Southampton free kick, and De Gea, obviously, he came up with a fantastic save. But here, things aren't going our way. See, 
Um, every game I don't dominate, that's what I mean. Um, there's still areas to be improved when we rotate our team. And yeah, rotating your team is not... Uh-oh. De Gea again. Wow. I'm not sure if they hit the crossbar or something, but still. Um, uh, we've been dominating again so far, so there's definitely ways for me to improve this team. If I review it, and we'll check out why. I've got to definitely look at it. Why haven't we dominated here? We've got the midfield of Carrick, Pogba, and Rafinha. For me, Rafinha, he's still gelling with the teammates, so that will be the key area. But he's an amazing advanced playmaker. He's got good creative ability. He can score as well. So uh, Pogba, I don't know. Carrick, maybe getting older. I'm not quite too sure. But he's not really going down. He's actually going up in some attributes, which is funny to think. But um, yeah, it's a... Maybe Rafinha just on okay. Maybe it's just your team talk. Maybe that's something. Uh, whenever I'm not winning with a big team, I just say I'm not happy on assertive. And it usually gets my team fired up. Let's say maybe 8 out of 10 times. Oh, yeah. 8 out of 10. This doesn't make sense, but I have no other, no other idea how to say it. It's like 8 out of 10, I feel confident I'll win from here. Like 8 out of 10 times when I do that team talk, I feel I would win. I'm confident. Uh, that's what because the team talks actually really good but maybe it's the subs <laughs> that i need to make that's probably a real possibility uh, silver will come off he's got a yellow uh we'll bring on uh Carniel, and we'll bring him on for belanta see that's what i talked about before with bringing belanta on into that position but rafinha probably is changing with pogba uh, pogba for mine he needs to be the advanced playmaker to for him to win games for us he needs to be that position for me playing a deep playing playmaker he's not really winning a game for us He's just maybe saving the game, playing good defensively. So Rafinha will come off uh, for Niangolan, definitely. I think I'll stop Niangolan. Uh, I don't know, Carrick. Carrick's a good creator. His deep line playmaker suits his role perfectly, if I'm honest. Uh, Al Shirari, I don't know. Al Shirari, he hasn't been amazing. Hernandez as well. Um, honestly, I don't know who to bring on, and we should, because we need to win. We have a couple, Yanazai, I don't know, Valencia. Honestly, I've no because all these players can win games for me. I know what I'll bring um, Al Shawari into that striking position, take Hernandez off, and bring on uh, Yanazai. As good as Hernandez has been for me, uh, scoring on a lot of occasions, there is games where he just doesn't play good. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, maybe it's just the way the game goes. Of course, a striker can't score every single game. You can't just rely on your striker. Other positions definitely have to come up and score for you. Uh, so here we're facing. A nil-nil result, and it wouldn't be the first time. But here we have a corner, Yanazai. Carniol, there we go. <laughs> uh, there's the great sub, Alejandro Carniol. Scores his third goal of the season. Exactly what we need. Um, this year in Football Manager, I've been pretty good from scoring from corners. And that's a pretty good sub. Bring on Yanazai and Carniol, and they both were involved with the goal. So great sub there. So here, I'll just go on control, because yeah, we haven't really been holding on to the possession in this game. We just came up with a corner goal. So... Make sure we hold on for the last couple of minutes. And this is what the best teams do. When you don't dominate a game, but somehow you just pick up the result, even though I'm not too pleased about it because it was just from a set play or a set piece. Like, I'm not happy about this result, definitely. And this is what I mean. There's still a room for improvement. But I don't feel... Like, my tactic, I don't think it can get better. The tactic is really solid because I dominate a lot of games. But um, you can't dominate every single game. Even the best teams in the world don't dominate every, every single game. They just grind out the results when they need to. So... I'll just say assertively um, a good win. See, not a lot of players got a good reaction, just a couple there, because they knew they didn't play to the highest ability. But we still had more possession, I guess, in the second half. Uh, we went off a little bit. Uh, but we still could have played way better. Um, that's what I mean. We didn't play amazing, but we had 81 passing accuracy, 56% possession. My opponent had zero clear-cut chances in their home game. So, yeah, it's a pretty, it's an okay performance. It's not a bad performance. Like, I don't think that was bad by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a way result. You can't be expected, like, to win, like, 5 nil away or something uh, that we've done before, but we're playing really well. So, yeah, hopefully enjoy this. Uh, I'll just want to check out my last unbeaten record. What is it? 11 games? See, that's not, a that's not like me being absolutely unbeatable. 11 games, and I can request a new contract, but I already have a decent... Actually, I've played a lot of seasons, haven't I? Uh, where are we? Um, my contract to 2018. So, I could. My reputation is world-class. Managing finances is good. That's what I like to see. So, my winning percentage is 80. Like, this stats altogether is pretty good. 
I've won 133 games out of 166 play. That's pretty good. Uh, scoring 382 times, conceded 102, yeah, 102, sorry, um, and only lost seven games. Losing seven games out of that many, that's, like, you can't complain about that. Obviously, being a team like Manchester United, that's something you would expect, but I think I've done it on a greater height. For me, that's bigger than you would expect, especially how they've done in real life. I've managed to um, do really well, uh, especially compared to David Moyes, especially in the first couple of seasons. Um, hopefully, you've watched it up to now, so it's not really giving it away. I won the Champions League two times so far. I won the Premier League. I don't really care about the other competitions. They're the two main ones. So I'm going to continue, well, at least look to continue. So, yeah, really, this is where most of the videos are interesting in the second half of the season like when i'm playing the champions league games that like the champions league games is what i'm going to show from now like premier league games probably not unless it gets really really close so yeah that's how basically this series will go from now with manchester united because obviously i am doing in the league and you would expect me to win it from here i would have to do terribly to lose it from here so from now on i'll be showing the champions league games when i'm in this situation so uh, leave your thoughts on how I'm going in this season. Leave your thoughts on transfers. I could make players to go out. Because, yeah, I definitely want to let go of players. I did try in January, but teams weren't simply interested. For me, I find it easier to sell players at the end of the season or start of the next season, however you want to call it. So, yeah, leave your thoughts. I'll just click it there so you might uh, want to see. And there's something I'm always reluctant to do. Like, guys that are coming through, like younger types, like Zaha, who's not playing, but I'm reluctant to sell him because he could reach... He still could grow into a good player. That's what I mean. I'm always reluctant to sell because they could develop into a really good player. So yeah, leave your thoughts on that as well with the young players coming through. But saying that as well, that's why I did signing all these young players. Well, Zaha doesn't really fit into that, I guess. But um, yeah, I do that to make profit. I, I, I need to sell them, I, but I'm always reluctant. You, don't, you never want to sell a player with high potential, but sometimes you have to do it for the balance of your team. So yeah, just leave your thoughts on everything I talked about. Uh, maybe the next video, if people want to see, I'll talk about more my... Well, the next one's going to be Champions League. So I'll really just give you a quick review. You see, under-21s, you can see here a lot of the high potential. So, yeah, guys here, who do you feel I should give a chance in the first team? There's definitely the forwards. See, all the strikers, I only think one guy can make it. Because, of course, you only have one main striker who's going to be the... Key, he'll definitely be the key player because the other guy will be... His morale won't be good because he's not playing much. Like so you've got Mwasa Dembele in there. You can see he's a decent player. He's got pace as well, strength, uh, but doesn't have a really high potential. Uh, then you've got Alberto Cherry, who's an amazing, strong striker. Finishing is good. He's good in the air as well. He's currently on loan to Sevilla. Uh, he's been scoring a decent amount of goals in yeah the games he's played on loan. So far, he's been on loan in pretty uh, good leagues, and he's been scoring at a decent pace i guess you can say uh richario zivkovic but this guy could probably play a wide role he's got pace he can still develop a bit more and he is still slowly developed at real betis uh he's playing consistently 18 games a season scored four times uh, he's looking like a really good pacey player a bit of strength as well so if he can continue to develop i think there would be a place for him wide uh, as a striker the main strike is probably the hardest role to get into the team you have to be pretty amazing but i feel i could have a better striker than hernandez regardless if he scores heaps for me like i still don't think hernandez is a world class striker he just scores heaps if that makes sense like someone like gabriel barbosa he could be that world class level amazing signing uh we made for him and yeah he's playing consistently again uh for montpellier uh in the league 1 in france uh, yeah, he's getting a lot of uh, good games. And when we bought him last season for only 475k, straight away out on loan to RZ, and he scored five times in six games. So you know he can score those goals for Santos as well, second season. It was amazing. So this is a big tip I want to give you. Don't splash the cash on young prospects in the first season, even though you won't get him as a homegrown player because you need like three years before 21. Don't worry about that. Use your own talent. Uh, that's the most realistic way. And wait like a couple seasons, because then you can sign him for cheap. Like I signed him, you know I signed, I talked about him already, but I'll just show you for proof in case you, you're you just a new viewer to my videos, uh, which is a real possibility because all my videos, when I upload them, go to the front page um, or when you search for Football Manager 2014. But um, who was I going to talk about here? Yeah, Rafinha, he's another one. I signed him when? He's 22. If you tried to sign him in the first season, Barcelona probably wouldn't even want to sell him and you'd have to spend like over 20 million or something. 
And if you wait a bit until he is a rotation player or something, you can get him for that cheap. 3.5 million, when now he's worth at 14.5 million, and he has so much potential to grow. So that's an insane signing as well. So that's a big tip for me to you. Uh, for young prospect players, don't try and sign them in the first season. More often than not, you'll have to overpay for them, and yeah, it won't be worth it. Just wait a couple seasons uh, till they're 20, until they're only rated as a backup for the first team or a rotation player, and you can really get them um, at a bargain price, as you saw by a couple players I showcased there. So um, yeah, hopefully you got that tip from me, and you can apply it in your games. Uh, drop a like if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time.